David Bonson, happy Thanksgiving to you. Well, happy Thanksgiving. I'm hearing you. Hopefully you're hearing me. I am indeed. David, I want to begin by talking to you about tariffs. I doubt you're a big tariff fan, but there are two kinds of tariffs. There's smoot Holly and the bad tariffs when we used to use them to raise money. And then there are strategic tariffs when you hit people over the head like Mexico, Canada, and China about fentanyl and migration. What did you make of yesterday's announcement by the president-elect? I would disagree with you that there's only two categories, but I would agree with you that what was said yesterday about Mexico and Canada, not China, fit into a different category where the serious intent is to not impose any tariffs, to use it as a blunt instrument to get their cooperation at the border. In other words, it is not a protectionist economic agenda. It is a national security (laughs) agenda. So if it works, everyone's going to celebrate it. And I strongly suspect it will uh, to some degree. Um, But I don't think that tariffs that are merely uh, used as a threat are always an effective way to do so when the agenda is economic, because the victim is never just the person you're going after. You inevitably have to hurt American business as well. Now, the 10 percent on China is also aimed at fentanyl. And the president-elect said so specifically They have promised repeatedly to stop the flow. Nothing happens in China that the CCP doesn't know about. They could stop fentanyl tomorrow. So I'm in favor of that national security tariff as well. What do you think about that? Well, I think that that one is a bit more nuanced because it is existing in tandem with other tariff threats and conversation that have other agendas. And so it's hard to uh, differentiate all of the different tariffs of different purposes. We talk about national security. We talk about fentanyl. But he also talks about um, kind of evening out the, the trade level. And I do not agree, uh, and nor would anyone else if they ever experienced it, that a uh, trade surplus with China would be a positive for our country. Well, I agree with that. And I also agree that, generally speaking, smoot Holly worldwide tariffs are a bad idea. But this is not that. And I, I spent some time on with News Nation last night explaining to people Lincoln was in favor of tariffs. Hamilton was in favor of tariffs. Use tariffs to protect domestic industries. They don't work that way anymore. They're only useful as a tool of national security. Are we in basic agreement? Yeah, other than I just think, and I know you'll agree, but we it's important we not talk about the way that they advocated tariffs as a revenue generator without mentioning that they did not have an income tax. So when we talk about a tariff today as a way of generating revenue and talk about the very clear Hamiltonian support of it, that today it would not be either or. It would be both and. And so there is a bit of difference there. But uh, certainly we're in agreement. Using tariffs to protect certain industries, I think, is cronyist and a bad idea. President Trump is going to use them for his strategic purposes, and I'm giving him a chance here. Just along the way, when I talk to my other friends, I'm not going to pretend I now support new taxes. Now, David Bonson is my non-paid financial advisor. In other words, I don't, I don't ask David. I don't pay David to manage my money. But I like him to second guess what I did. You know, I only own three stocks until last week. I own Amazon, Microsoft, and Palantir, and the rest goes into mutual funds because I'm not smart like you, David. But I sold Palantir last week. I just said, this is nuts. What do you think of that? Well, I think you might have potentially have a couple others that are nuts too there. But, um, you know, valuation is a very difficult timing mechanism. Stocks can get overvalued and stay overvalued for a very long time. Keynes had a line about uh, things being crazier longer than, you know, you can be solvent and so forth. But um, look, I think that there are a lot of things, mostly on the large cap growth side that are stretched in valuation. Uh, but profit growth is very good in our country right now. And, and so with a decent economic backdrop and good profit growth, valuations may stay stretched. But people do need to know that uh, these NVIDIAs, Microsofts, uh, Amazons in this bucket, too. It won't end up ending well of that, I'm certain. But I wouldn't try to time it, you let, let me ask you something, David. There's a Christmas rally traditionally. Is that a, a myth for dummies like me or is it a reality for investor and managers like you? Oh, you're not a dummy, but it is definitely a myth. Uh, Markets are up about 59% of the time in December. Markets are up about 59% of most months. So there's no 
particular reality around a Christmas rally. And having done this professionally 25 years, my wife can attest that we've had many Christmas holidays ruined by market volatility. So it can cut both ways. It's tougher to get a Christmas rally, by the way, when you've had the kind of Q4 and Q3 we've already had. In other words, you could argue Christmas came in September this year. Yeah. So let me now go macro. Uh, the president's going to get his tax cuts extended and revised. I personally want to see the SALT deduction doubled because not for economic reasons, but because of the equity that people put into living where they chose to live on the assumption of a 30-year mortgage being deductible. I thought we broke faith with the American people when we changed that. What do you think about the tax extension? Uh, will it be good for the country? And do you want the SALT to be changed? Okay, well, hold on, Hugh. The SALT deduction has nothing to do with the mortgage deduction. The, the <clears throat> mortgage deduction is in place apart from the state and local tax deduction. And moving it from a 10K cap where it is now for SALT to 20K isn't going to impact anybody. Be, the higher rates, excuse me, the lower rates and better AMT more than offset that impact. The only people affected by SALT were very candidly people like me very high earners in blue states. And it was brutal. Well, yes. Yeah. Philosophically, I fully agree with it. I do not believe that uh, Texans and South Dakotans should be subsidizing New York and California. The mortgage interest deduction is a different story because it's still a million dollars for anybody who had a million dollar mortgage before. For new homeowners since 2018, it went to 750K. You could deduct the mortgage of 750 but nobody had something taken from them. It was only for a new mortgage going forward. And that mortgage deduction is separate from SALT. It's no, see, I, I this, is, this shows my ignorance. I thought state and local taxes included property taxes. And property taxes yeah, on property homes taxes. got capped. Right. The, no, no, no. You're right about that. But you had said the mortgage deduction. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, okay. The, I'm talking about property taxes. Property taxes are destroying people in New York. They're destroying people in Connecticut. They're destroying people in California, though it's less there, new home people. We should not break faith with people who bought a 30-year fixed mortgage and have their property taxes going up year after year. I, I, it just strikes me as being um, a, a double cross on the Americans. You got one minute to respond to that, David. Well, though, Hugh, the problem where I disagree with you is that what you're suggesting is, therefore, people in South Dakota should pay for it. Right. That all we're talking about is relieving people's federal income taxes for what their state does. People have mobility. And I don't think it's a double cross when nobody was promised that their federal taxes would go down for their bad state policy. There's an easy way to do it. Pass what you and I did in California with Prop 13. Pass that in New York, Connecticut, New Jersey. You change the whole situation. Wait a minute. I want, I want to keep you through the break, David, and post it because I have a fundamental disagreement with you on this. It's not about economics. It's about equity. And I want, to, I want to make sure I correct my error. It's not mortgage interest. We're talking about property taxes here, and that's what really bugs me. Welcome back, America. I hope David Bonson, my friend and the CEO of the Bonson Group, is a Michigan hater as, as I am. But we're talking about people in Michigan. David, I want to close this loop. You brought up capital gains. It can go up and down every year. Everyone knows capital gains change. And you can get in and out of a stock in a hurry, depending on whether or not you're going to make it. Houses are different. When Americans buy a house and start to raise a family, they get network connection. They, they put down roots. And when the SALT deduction is capped, they are at disadvantage because the federal government broke I don't know how long the SALT deduction was in place, but it was at least 30 years, wasn't it? Uh, well, it was different. And, and also, Hugh, you, by that logic, you would have to say that state taxes can't go up. They moved, no, with, an no. they moved with an understanding of state taxes, right? The, the they did, but they moved to a house. You can, I move, you move, people move all the time. When you buy a house, you start a life. And when you start a life, your reliance damages. First day, first year, law school, Bev Pooley, reliance damages are everything. If you rely on a contract, in this case, a social contract, if someone breaks it, they owe you money. I think the federal government so, had a reliance damages right to all in of us. theory, reliance 
think you're focusing on the wrong thing. If somebody makes a couple hundred grand a year and has an eight hundred thousand dollar house, their property taxes are eight thousand, and now over time they've gone up to twenty thousand. They've gone up two and a half times, and they lose that deductibility. It's a six thousand dollar impact. Their state taxes and the poor. I'm saying six thousand of the deductibility. The state taxes and the property taxes that went up so much is exponentially higher. So that's why I don't understand why we focus on the federal impact versus what the states are doing. The very easy solution is to have a social contract where people buy a house, make roots, have an understanding of what it's going to be, and then it's capped to two percent a year growth, like it was in California. That well, we do agree on that. that we do agree on it. that, but I I wanted Kevin Brady to take into account the equity interest of other people. All right, David, last question. Are you expecting the first year of the Trump presidency to be good for the economy and for investors? I'm expecting a good year in the economy, and I expect public policy to incrementally add to the goodness of what will be in the economy. In other words, I never want to say that public policy is the number one driver of economic activity, for good or for bad, but I expect positive impact to the economy as a result of the Reaganite things that the Trump administration will do, which is lower taxes, deregulation, and better energy policy. David Bonson, always a pleasure to have you. A happy Thanksgiving to you. What's the name of the book, David? Full-time work and the meaning of life. Fulltimebook.com, my friend. Fulltimebook.com. I should I remember I, I was looking for it this morning, but full time book is a great Christmas present for everyone out there who wants to understand why we are made to work. Full time work. Uh, fulltimebook.com. Thank you, David Bonson.